Hello everybody and welcome. Today we're going to discuss the solution to the problem patching array. It's a hard tabled problem although it does not require any knowledge of data structures or algorithms. It just requires you to understand the logic and a couple of observations will help us get there. First, let's discuss about the input output. You're given a list nums which is a list of integers and you're given another integer n. Now the goal is to design a function that returns an int at the end. This int represents the number of patches. Now you have to somehow modify or look at the nums list in such a way that you can generate this ranging of events from 1 to n. Okay, this is a bit confusing so let's actually look at a sample. Let's take a look at this sample here where we have uh, 1 comma 3 as the list of nums and n as the target. Now initially, what is the sort of number of generated numbers? In this case, it's three numbers generated, one, three, and then a combination of both of them. Obviously, this does not cover the entire range from one to n. We need two, five, and six, all of them together here also. So one of the possible patches is going to be adding two. This means that the nums array is now going to look like one, two, three, which can now generate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Feel free to write it down on your own and enumerate all the possible combinations of these sums. They're going to give you the range 1 to 6, which is what we wanted. Basically, one patch was able to get us to the right answer and so we'll return 1 as the answer for this case. Now let's look at a couple of more examples and we'll forget about the patches part for now and understand the core observation behind this problem. We have the nums list again and 1, 2, 3 given this time. Now we want to discuss what the range of these nums is. Basically, from start to the end, what is the contiguous range of element it covers? Basically, 1 to 6 is just a mathematical notation, meaning that we have element 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Simple. And so 1, 2, 3 will have the range from 1 to 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, well, again, at this point of time, you can pause the video, try and enumerate everything on your own, and you'll find that the range is from 1 to 10. More simply, you can also look at 1, 2, 3, since that covers everything from 1 to 6. Adding 4 to that list just increases this upper limit by 4. So you can see 4 added to 6 gives you 10. In another case, like 1, 2, 3, 7, you can observe the same thing happening. The range just go goes and increases by this amount. So original list was 1, 2, 3. As soon as we added 7 at the end, the range now increased from 6 to 6 plus 7, which is 13. Now the question we want to ask is, is it always the case? In this case right here, 1, 2, 3, 8, is the answer 1 to 14? Am I covering every single integer from 1 all the way up till 14, both inclusive? If you note right now, what's happening is we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 given by these three numbers here. But there is no integer 7 here. There is no possible combination of all of these which can make you the integer 7. So this is actually incorrect. Okay, what's happening here? Well, we have sort of split it out into these two cases here. The case where you can directly add this new element and just increase the range by that element. Or maybe you can't increase the range by that element. And in that case, you'll need to patch this list on your own. Like in this case, we added the patch of two. This is the entire solution to the problem, in fact. We'll look at one, two, three again, and their upper limit is six. And we'll keep that in mind. Now we ask the question, is the current element which we want to include, maybe it's four, maybe it's seven, is the current element less than equals to upper plus one? Is this current element inside of the range? Is this current element, upper plus one is by the way seven right now, is this element less than equals to seven? And so all of these cases between like four, five, six, seven, are going to get included here. And so we'll do this computation. We'll just simply extend the list. We'll simply extend the range. Upper now becomes upper plus the element. Basically 13 is what? 
13 as the old range 6 plus the new element 7 and so we have done this upper plus equals to element and once we've figured out once we've added this 7 element just go on to the next element and look at the same logic pretty easy what if that is not the case in this case right here what if it was 1 2 3 8 as we discussed, we needed to patch in this case. Before it, we can't go forward. If that were the case, see what's actually happening is we want this to have like a continuous sort of range. You could write it 1 to 6 inclusive and then uh, 8 to 14 inclusive, but the 7 in the middle is going to eat you up. So we'll actually go ahead and patch this up, include the 7 right now at the cost of 1 and the upper goes up by upper plus 1. Wait, what? Okay, so as soon as we include this element 7, uh, what happens to the answer? Upper was 6 initially. We check this. The current element is 8. Now 8 is not less than equals to 7, which means that we're going to go in this path. Element is currently the 8 and the upper plus 1 is 7. And so we want to patch this up. We want to insert the element 7. Now we insert it at a cost of 1. And now, since we added this element 7, which is going to be upper plus 1, we can now retry this logic. And we can again go on and continue on the same if statement. And that is pretty much the solution. Okay, maybe the code will help you understand it better, but it's mostly like a pretty complicated problem you need to uh, write it on your own and uh, only then you'll fully understand what's going on. Anyways, we'll actually code this up and maybe that helps. So we'll have i equals to zero. I basically uh, going over all the nums. So what's the big condition here? The entire goal of this problem is to reach a state where we are one comma n. So this n is sort of the upper limit goal. When upper limit, when upper is going to be less than n, we have to do some computation. When we haven't reached n yet, when the upper limit of our all of the combination sum has not yet reached the n out there, we want to do some computation. If we have reached there, however, we can just return uh, the cost, the cost of whatever it took to get there. Okay, now we'll write the if condition. If element uh, what is the element element less than equals to upper plus one so we'll write element less than equals to upper plus one uh, element by the way is what element is the current number we're pointing at and uh, just for a quick sanity check we'll also ensure that i is always less than the length of nums otherwise it will go out of bounds okay we'll do some computation in this case the green case else we'll do some other computation in the red case okay so what's the computation here upper plus equals to element so we'll do upper plus equals to element which is nums of i and i plus equals to one we'll move on to the next element now else what do we do well obviously in this case we need to patch this up so cost goes up by one at the same time upper gets increased by the whatever element we have patched so the element we are going to patch is upper plus one. And so this follows the entire condition. We're going to retry and try out the if statement again. And only if it succeeds, we are going to go to the next element. So on and so forth, we can go over this entire thing and we're done with the code. Now, uh, feel free to again, take a break. Look at this logic right here and understand what's going on. We'll also discuss quickly the space-time complexities. So uh, it looks like it's going to be order of n, but is that always the case? We aren't increasing upper by one each time, are we? We're either increasing upper by this guy, nums of i, or we're going to increase it by itself. This actually hints at what we have seen. Like this is just going to go to the twice its value. So it looks like uh, maybe we are looking at something on the order of uh, log n, log uh, n. And this statement looks like uh, we may have to, or we actually have to go over all the elements. So this is order of m. 
Okay, what's the total complexity then? Well, we either go to this if or this else. So the total complexity in terms of time is going to be m plus log n. m representing the length of the list nums. Okay, this is the time complexity. What about the space complexity? Well, we haven't used anything other than these three variables here. And that is it. Three variables as the space complexity or a constant space complexity. Anyways, this is it for the solution of a patching array. I know it's a hard problem and it's a mathematically sort of dense problem requiring you to look at a lot of cases, understand where it breaks down and finally figure out this beautiful looking if condition. Anyway, this is it for the solution. And uh, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a double thumbs down. Really let me know. If you have any comments, feedback, suggestion, I'm always there in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.